Hey guys and welcome to part 3 of the Resident Evil 5 playthrough. We are now on to chapter 2, 1 at the storage facility. So what do you think are in those boxes then? Those boxes? Well, besides um ammunition and money, lots and lots of gold, um, it would have been nice if there was some food. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe a nice wee rustler's burger in there. <laughs> just just yeah, happens yeah. to be in there. <laughs> And again, like I mentioned before, and if the only thing I'm not showing this in this LP is the results and the upgrade inventory, which is in between chapters. It's just so, so we can keep ourselves going. And yes, I brought. And yes, the green bastard is still joining along with us. <laughs> <laughs> and again, like I said before, these load screens are kept in is because unlike standard load screens that give you fuck all, these give you a little bit of hints into the series. Pay attention to this, Colin. <laughs> That's just bloody savage. <laughs> well, hey, if you saw the, if you know what the trap's there, you might as well take advantage of it. <laughs> that never gets old. Well, I guess it's supposed if you, if you're up, if you can handle games that handle blood, guts, and gore. See, I just can't really see me handle Mortal Kombat. Well, that, well, the difference between well, it's not as bad as the blood violence is not as bad here as in, as it is in Mortal Kombat. No, this is quite tame. Ah, it's just limited to like headshots, and then that's it. But not we're not talking like loss of arms or anything like that. Mortal Kombat is the definition of bloody brutal. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> wait! I'd heard an explosion in the distance. <laughs> And here's a new enemy type that we get introduced here. Dogs! Bark, bark. <laughs> Surprise, Peter. Let him get, let him get away with this. <laughs> Although I'm sure there's probably an article somewhere from Peter Aye. about this. Mm -hmm. Now, the, when the dog's head splits in two, you do really do not want to get grabbed by that because if you fail that QT able to break away from it, instant death. And we're talking like the jaw as it splits open, so you imagine its jaw is open, your head's in the middle, and it closes, your head's gone. I just need to throw my bone. <laughs> what, a, an infected bone? Yeah, a nice big tasty bone. <laughs> I don't think these dogs would have the right mindset, I mean, the, it just shows that the, everybody in this town's affected, apart from us. <laughs> <laughs> would it have the right mindset while its head's kind of torn apart? <laughs> And here's our next type of human enemy, the Chubbies. Yes, these are fat fucks. Fat fucks. <laughs> Where they, do, they don't have any weapons, but they're strong, and they take a, a lot of health to get down. But the trick to dealing with them is um is a free hit combo, actually, with you and your partner can do in conjunction with each other. Where you shoot them in the knee, like so, he goes down, go for a punch, your partner goes for a punch, and then you finish him off. He's down. You can tell he's down when you see the little blue line. That blue line indicates that there's a treasure there. That's a, that's a visual cue to show there's an item you can pick up. Red is your ammunition, and red's your ammunition, green's your health, and blue's your money. Money. Thank you, Stevie. Never thought I'd see Luigi giving Waluigi a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> In some alternate universe, the Luigi's brothers were friends. <laughs> Imagine how Mario and Wario feel. Well, uh, there's a comic where you know how like Wario was supposed to be like sort of like mean and greedy and that. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is because Mario used to bully him as a as a child. Okay. Yeah, Mario was the bully. So why do they keep playing Mario as the ultimate hero when he's actually an arsehole? <laughs> By the way, do do you believe the whole game theory thing that like Mario is like psychotic? Um, I've not actually seen that theory, but I do believe the um in the instruction manual, like when it says Bowser's inhabited the Mushroom Kingdom's habits, well, the citizens with his black magic turn them into blocks. I'm like, well, would that mean Mario's committing murder every time he breaks a block? <laughs> well, nobody liked the Toads anyway, so <laughs> not not a huge loss. Have you heard the truth about Toad? Yes, I have heard the truth about Toad. <laughs> I know you like the truth about Toad, Andrew. You, you like talking about it. Aye. <laughs> and singing about it. <laughs> <laughs> For those who do not know, go and watch Brental Floss. <laughs> no. 
Ooh, nice acrobatic, Steven. <laughs> uh, that is that some um, Sheva's final hit. That's another thing as well. Um, the characters have different an melee animations depending on the character. Some are better than others. It's like that one where we saw where she did Sheva did the cartwheel. That is a one of her powerful melees. That can cause an instant death to a thug. Almost every time. I mean, almost. Here's me trying to figure out what can I get rid of my inventory so I can pick up this herb. Because like I said, you're limited to 9 spaces, and as you can see from this footage, the, the inventory system is in real time. Now here's something in this section that's been bothering me this entire time that I've been playing the PS4 version. I swear, these dogs right here, one of the models of the dogs is actually smaller than the other ones, I swear. I mean, look at this right now and tell me, tell me if that dog is smaller, this one right here. It does look significantly smaller so it's perfectly normal in the ps3 version exactly perfectly normal but for some reason they shrunk it down here <laughs> don't know why but <laughs> you would think for a port it would have been exactly the same so see like the, the difference between this port and the ps3 version are the graphics like sort of like higher highly details compared to the ps3 or? no the graphics themselves are exactly the same it's just the frame rate is, mu is a bit faster okay so if, aside from that, it's probably much like a straight, straight port. Aye. PS3. PS4. I, apart from the DLC stuff that was added after the game's release, it's all included in the PS4 version, so you don't have to download anything. So is this like a completely digital game? Um, I for us European for the Europeans, I think it's digital. But if you actually go down to GeForce in Glasgow Union Street, you can get them physical, but they're like American copies. Uh, but the PS4 is region free, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So you, if you want to get them physical, you can. But if you got them digital, then that's absolutely fine. See, I'm I'm more of a physical kind of guy. I'd rather take like a physical copy of a game over a digital game. Mm. That, that that's just me personally. Yeah, I understand why. Because let's say you had a blackout, you couldn't do anything, you lost all your game data. At least with a physical game, you can start from beginning again. But if you don't have a digital, if you have digital, then who knows where you might have to buy the game again. <laughs> See, the, the good thing about, um, like, on the PlayStation Store, like, say, say like, your PlayStation, like, broke down and you get a new one, but you can, like, link up to your old account. Mm -hmm. Like, one thing I like is you can pretty much re-download all the games that you previously bought because it's under your account. Mm -hmm. But the thing with, like, the Wii U is the games are tied to that console. They're not tied to your account. So oh. you have to rebuy the games again. Greedy fuckers. <laughs> again, I said this before and I'll say it again. For a family friendly company, Nintendo really are a bunch of assholes. <laughs> I, I really I really love Nintendo, but their their decisions are like just completely backwards uh, at times. Exactly, like this whole thing about oh not sh not not allowing specific LPs of their specific games and like how, why don't you just join the other 99% of other video game companies that see this this idea as a free advertisement? Mm -hmm. Because who's to say that someone will be watching this? Let's say someone who's never played Resident Evil is watching this right now. He's a, and he and she are enjoying what they're seeing and they're like, that actually looks pretty fun, I think I'll buy the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I got into games like Luigi's Mansion, for example. Yeah, you liked Luigi's Mansion, didn't you? I saw footage of it, liked what I saw, bought the game, loved it, and beat it 100%. It's a very short game, but it's like one of those games where you like play through to get like the highest score that you can. Exactly. The but then I believe in that game, um, yeah, it's actually a challenge to get the lowest ranking because you're giving us mm -hmm. a fuck ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because I think it's like around the middle rankings. It's where you get like the sort of medium sized house. Aye, and that's considered like the canon sort of ending. Aye, funnily like, enough. Aye, when you get a pretty okay house. Mm -hmm. You'd think like the highest sort of like ranking one might be the canon one, but no, it's the middle rank. <laughs> they really love to shit on Luigi, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> because it's that sort of like middle class house that appears in the second game. <laughs> but then when you look about it, Luigi has more character than Mario. We're not. We're talking about the character, not Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Steven just just obsessed with the little green bastard. <laughs> Thanks, partner. 
What, what would you say is your favourite Mario character then, Wal Waluigi? Probably Waluigi because he's an anarchy troll. <laughs> I, I I really I really like Bowser. Like, th there's there's something about Bowser. I always think he's like really misunderstood. Okay, we're sidetracking now. We're yeah. talking about Mario. <laughs> it's an evil game. <laughs> how, how did we even get onto that conversation in the first place? You brought it up. Oh, I forget. <laughs> anyway, so we're in like a sort of seaside town at the moment. Yeah, as you can see it in that billboard, we're in the town of Kijuju. 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 Imagine some. Imagine if someone took that name and made it into a master name, King Juju. <laughs> King Kijuju. <laughs> and then you can have that scene from Russia Free where he's like, "I am Jew." No, not me. You. <laughs> That's shit. Oh, I've not seen that movie in years. Uh, I used to watch it a lot, but as you get older, you realize all the plot points. Here's our backup. Now, be careful with this section right here because he will fire rockets to provide cover for these guys. But if you run ahead, like this idiot here, <laughs> if you run ahead, you'll actually get hit by those rockets and you might die. See, what would what would the guy in the helicopter be like if they found out that he killed uh, Chris by accident? <laughs> He'd be like, fuck, I better go back to base. <laughs> Steven, get your arse back here. <laughs> now, this section would be handy if you have a sniper rifle, but unfortunately, I'm stuck to using the handgun. But I'm sure that's no problem to you. Aye, good. <laughs> As I can definitely, <laughs> as you can see. Steven, what are you doing? Steven! Steven, you alright? <laughs> Hi, there he is. Don't scare me like that. Again, the last thing I want is someone to be on dying status when I'm busy worrying about myself. <laughs> Which is kind of sad, actually. So many bodies. Yeah, stands on his arm, he's dead. <laughs> and another thing as well, if you're grabbed, you'll instantly get help, which alerts your partner to see if your partner needs help. Well, he's dead. <laughs> Not quite. Ah, uh, last minute bat. ditch. What? Well, that's nowhere near a bat. It looks like a bat. I don't see the ears, and it's not hanging upside down. Well, it's got wings. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Birds have wings. Well, it looks like bat wings. <laughs> so, it's a bat. Here's our first sniper rifle. This is the first rifle you get at the beginning of the game. It's bolt action, which means it's powerful, but you can only fire one shot after a five second delay, where you have to manually record the, bu the bullet. Later on, you'll get semi-automatic weapons where they're not as powerful, but they completely negate the bolt action, so you can rapid fire them. Not like rapid fire like a machine gun, but, you know. <laughs> you proper decked him there. Yes, full tackle through the window. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Not even fired a bullet. I consider that a stealth attack, actually. Fire through the window and then stomp them with a foot. <laughs> so is he, like, just peacefully looking out the window and then you just, like, decked him? <laughs> well, if you let, if you let, if you go back in the playback and listen to the audio, he's actually trying to smack the window. Ah, oh, right, okay. It just happened, like, so quickly. It looks like he was just peacefully just standing <laughs> at the window. Well, I would have liked it if he had his back to the window and done that that <laughs> way. <laughs> Chris Redfield's going full Batman. Oh, he's fucked. Alright, there's a fuck ton of those bat things on his helicopter and he's going down. Yeah, see, so you called it a bat. Yeah, well, because of you bloody correct. Well, you named it a bat, so I might as well call it a bat. <laughs> Speaking of bats, actually, the voice actor who's voicing Chris Redfield here is Roger Craig Smith. Yes, the same guy who voices Sonic the Hedgehog. And Batman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's with all the connection to bats? But here's a weird thing. See, when you listen to Batman and Arkham Origins, it doesn't sound too different to Chris Redfield. You could, you'd could you think it's Chris Redfield in a bat suit. It's <laughs> his Halloween costume. Like, imagine um Alfred comes up to him and he's like, Sir, I believe a Mrs. Valentine called for you. Not now, Alfred. <laughs> As you may have recalled in the big of the opening cuts, and we had a flashback of a gravestone of Jill Valentine. Our beloved heroine from the first game and the third game is now some now dead. Really? Yeah, that's what that flashback was. That was her tomb. Oh. Huh. She's dead. She's dead. Is that... Uh, like, this is going to sound like a really nubbish question. Is that the same character that, that you play as in uh, Revelations? Yes, it is. Yeah. Revelations takes place before Resident Evil 5. In fact, Revelations is in the time gap between 4 and 5. 
that's the one where it's in the cruise ship, which I definitely recommend. It, because again, it's a mixture of both action but horror when you're on a cruise ship. And to me, water enemies are a bit scarier. Mainly because I'm, I wouldn't say I'm hydrophobic, but if there's a, if it's a, it's um, like, how can I describe this? If the, let's say there was an ocean, right? If it was clean and all, I would jump in, but if there was fishes in it, I'd probably think, nah, I don't really want to go in there. I know a video that will creep the hell out of you, Andrew. Oh, uh, don't bother showing me. I've already had weird programs like watching the Blue Planet, actually, where they go into the abyss. We know where they go, where it's to the point where it's pitch black in the bottom of the sea, and all the weird creatures you see. Yeah, it's pretty much along the lines of that. Hmm. That I can handle, actually, because I did like that episode where they were in the the abyss, but again, the creatures you see that are really fucking creepy. They're very alien. -like, exactly. You wouldn't even think they were on the same planet that we live on. <laughs> exactly. And like, when you look at the anglerfishes, for example, how the hell do they produce that light? Yeah, it's weird. Well, in the in Tom in um in the um, program, they mention it as bioluminescence, which somehow biological is making light. Hmm. How? And then you've got creatures like. One of the infamous ones I remember was called the Gulper Eel. The Gulper Eel. Where it's a big massive eel where its eyes are very tiny, but its mouth is as big as itself. Because <sighs> they can swallow any prey of almost any size. Even as big as themselves. Jeez. <sighs> like I said, weird creatures in the abyss. And there's, they say there's still like so many species that are like still undiscovered. Aye, it's amazing what you can find if you have the money and technology. <laughs> Not to mention it must be fucking freezing down there. Aye, it will be. <clears throat> Here's me providing Stephen with some cover with the sniper rifle. Because it, this is best bit is where you have to toss your partner to the other side because the gate at the bottom of these stairs is locked. The only way to get the gate is to open it from the outside. No, thanks, Stevie. Thank you for opening that. Again, I love the reload animations. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first. That's the thing. This is the thing when you play these type of Resident Evil games. You go into an area, you kill off the enemies, then you then you explore every room to find all the ammunition and health you can find, so you can prepare yourself. Compared to if you go ahead to the next section and you've only got a few bullets left, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And another thing, always shoot the red barrels. Michael Bay style. <laughs> I take it they explode then? <laughs> yes. Like so. I, I, like, you know the latest Transformers trailer that we saw during the Wonder Woman movie? Yeah. There weren't that many explosions in it, was there? Aye, but at the same time I'm like, not another one! Is this, like, I've lost track, is this the fifth It's the fifth Transformers where they added dinosaurs to it. Because cause I've only watched the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wait, tell a lie, I think I saw the first and the second, but I never watched any of the other ones after that. Exactly the same here. Chainsaw! The standard Resident Evil enemy they've used since 4. They must really like this guy. <laughs> well, compared to Resident Evil 4, actually, this guy's, these chainsaws are actually pretty easy. Because in Resident Evil 4, what happens, they would slowly walk up to you, but the moment they're right next to you, they instantly go for your head. Like an instant slash, the moment you're right next to them. Here, they go right next to you, and then they stop for like two seconds before they swing. And the swing's very lo long, so you can actually just run away from them. <laughs> but they, but I think to make up for that, they take a fuck ton of health to, to get down. Like, you see, that that must have been about 10 sh shots, or tw 12 shots with a shotgun at close range just to put them down. But here's the thing as well, in higher difficulties they actually get back up. You can tell when the chainsaw is on, if the chainsaw is not on, he's, he won't get back up like so. And this is when he goes full mad, where he constantly swings and he will not stop. Until he goes down. And if you wonder what that whistle was, that's Steven taunting. Yes, your characters <laughs> can taunt by pressing down on both analog sticks. Where the female characters um, in this, all they do is just whistle. Well, Chris can do a little taunt to say, come on, is that what you got? That kind of thing. But it's very tricky to do that taunt, actually. Like I said, you've got to press down on both of the left and right sticks of the controller. Mm. 
saving. Yes, this game has an autosave feature. <laughs> Be thankful for that. A little hard for Steven there. Oh, now we're in the crashed helicopter site. This is going to be scary. <laughs> well, not scary, more like, what the fuck, freaky, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god damn. He's seen better days. <laughs> oh, here come the crows. <laughs> I can't get out of my head. I've, that's this guy. This um mod I saw. It was this cutscene, but this guy. What this hacker did is he replaced the crows with the the big bad of the villain. He's got flapping arms and <laughs> flying in the air. <laughs> and Whoa. here's QTEs and cutscenes. You fail these, you die. I bet this just like really throws you off guard the first time though. Yeah, this is where you need to prepare yourself. The reason why it's named is because the QT will be on Steven's screen. He has to press the button. Let's see. His teeth. Why the hell are there motorcycles to begin with? <laughs> oh, jeez, there's so many, I don't know where to aim. <laughs> Failed that you would have gotten run over by those motorcycles. Ah, uh, here's our backup Delta team. Whoa, jeez, that was just some. <laughs> Although, <laughs> <laughs> well, how out of place would that be? <laughs> uh, well, every movie has to have that scream at least once. Ah, Captain Josh Stone <laughs> of the Delta team. Oh, hello, Chris. How you doing? Yes, he actually speaks that way. Does it? Ah, uh, because he's African. Hello, Mr. Redfield. Would you like to sign my petition for the Resident Evil 5 Gold Edition? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Josh. I owe you one. <laughs> know each other. I trained under Josh. He taught me everything I know. Yeah, Josh trained Sheva to learn what she has to do now. Let's continue your search for Irving. According to the data we retrieved from the hard drive, we believe he has moved on to the mining area. There's more info inside. Now, you remember that guy with the laptop that we briefly saw in the cutscene? Yeah. That's the that's the bioterrorism black market dealer that we're after. Josh. Ricardo Irvin. Just he's, what he's done in this town is trying to sell them on the black market so that someone else can buy that and do the exact same thing in another town. Jill. This must be important. <laughs> Chris, are you alright? This picture, it's. Uh, it's nothing. And with that awkward moment, we'll be seeing you guys in the next part.